What's up, everybody? My name is Tucker. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Houston Rockets. If you enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like rating on it and subscribe to the channel as well for more videos just like this one every single day. With those things said, let's go ahead and get started. OK, there's some uh, some news from last night's game about Houston. And I wanted to not only talk about that, but then use that as kind of a springboard to just talk about the Rockets in general, where they're at, what this rebuild is going to look like moving forward and what this part of the season so far has meant to that rebuild. So first things first, let's get to the news. There was a, uh, a heated exchange, supposedly, in the locker room uh, for Houston at halftime of their game against Denver yesterday. Uh, they're getting absolutely pummeled by Denver. They're down 20 points. And apparently, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. had an issue. He was throwing stuff in the locker room. He left the arena. And Christian Wood, who did not start the game, only played eight minutes in the first half, then did not play at all in the second half, reportedly didn't start because he broke a team rule, and then in this case, just did not play the second half, potentially for what was said in the locker room. There was issue with uh, John Lucas, one of the coaches. All in all, just not a very good look. And it's interesting that these two players are the ones that are involved in this. Obviously, it's been at times a frustrating season in Houston. We can talk about all that in a second. But these are two talented, yet it's weirdly available players. Kevin Porter Jr., we've all seen how talented he is. I mean, crazy scoring performances, pretty good stats uh, at certain points in Houston. And we saw that talent in Cleveland as well. And Cleveland moved him for a top 55 second round pick, which is NBA code for nothing. They traded him for nothing because the top 55 second round pick thing is notorious for a, we need to put something in the deal. We don't actually think we're going to get anything. So just take this guy from us so we don't have to just straight up cut him. Go ahead and have Kevin Porter Jr., that's what happened with him in Cleveland, despite the talent that we've seen, which points to some of the issues he could potentially have off the court. There were issues in Cleveland. Apparently, they moved his locker and he lost his mind. And ultimately, they decided to move him. And then Christian Wood, who is, again, a talented player, a big guy with skill that signed a deal that I think a lot of people saw as cheaper than what they had anticipated Christian Wood would have signed uh, a couple of off seasons ago. But there have been some reports and rumors as well about him that maybe he's not the greatest teammate of all time. Now, I'm not going to sit here and judge either of these guys for actions that I'm, you know, looking at through through an article. But point being, it's interesting that it's these two guys considering um, parts of the reputation that have followed them here to Houston. Now, this this Houston team is in a really interesting spot because. I think everybody kind of knew it wasn't going to be a great year. It started off really poorly. I think they were like 1-14 in 14 or 1-15 in 15 or something atrocious like that. And then they went on a little bit of a run. They're playing a lot of the young guys. And now they're kind of back in the situation where it's just going to be a frustrating year. And these kinds of incidents are concerning because frustration should be expected. It should be understood that you're not going to be that great, but it should be part of the long-term process. I understand it's much easier for me to sit here and talk about the process of everything and, and just going through and making sure you continue to improve. It's much more difficult when you're actually there and a part of it. But bottom line, the development of the young players on the roster right now is so, so critical to this rebuild in Houston, because what we've seen out of rebuilds that have failed across the league over the last 10 years are the teams that they fail to do the little things. They fail to develop the fringe guys. They're only solely focused on getting Zion, getting Brandon Ingram, getting their young star player. And they, they never focus enough on the other stuff that could potentially be used in trades or just you can never have too many assets as a basketball team. And too often the rebuild is focused on let's get this top three pick. Let's get this top three pick. And that'll solve all of our problems. And for Houston, They've got Kevin Porter Jr. They've got Christian Wood. They've got Shangun. They've got all these other rookies. They've got Jalen Green, who's had an up and down rookie season. They need all of those things because, yes, they have future picks. They have their own pick. They're probably going to have a high pick again this year. But you have to get the other stuff right as well. And that's especially critical as it relates to Jalen Green. And again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Jalen Green is going to be an awful NBA player, that he was a mistake or a bust or anything like that. But anytime that you have someone drafted directly after you that is playing as well as Evan Mobley is and Evan Mobley's team is winning basketball games. Granted, that Cleveland team is better than what they have in Houston, but still, it's going to cause some concern in terms of the decision-making process in the front office. You can start looking and say, how did how did we as Houston not see what this guy was going to be? Why did we take the Jalen Green guy who, again, 
he's been fine. But the overarching point here for Houston is the goal needs to be doing as many of the correct things as possible to put yourself in the best position moving forward. This is going to take a while. It's not going to be quick. You're not going to be rebuilt in a year, a year and a half, two years. It's going to be a three to four year thing. And in order for that to work properly, because you are starting at literally zero, John Wall, maybe at some point you can move him or at least get out of the money. Eric Gordon, you can get some value out of. But basically, you're starting at nothing in terms of a player perspective. You have no cornerstone franchise guy on the roster right now. And so you have to make sure you get all of the little things right so that down the road you can move Kevin Porter Jr. or Christian Wood or this, that, and the other thing for this pick or this player, or it makes it more feasible to make that star trade once you do start to turn the team around. And I relate it to what ended up happening in Brooklyn. Now, to take Kevin Durant and Kyrie, take take that completely out of the situation. But uh, Kenny Atkinson, for all of his flaws as a coach, did a really good job of developing players that allowed Brooklyn to get in position to sign KD and Kyrie. Again, just put that to the side. But where they started and where they ended up was a huge, huge gap. And a lot of that had to do with the work they did on the fringes. Guys like Joe Harris continuing to improve. Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, guys that were drafted late in the first round, developing as players and becoming legitimate assets. D'Angelo Russell, who was a distressed asset at the time that they traded for him, he ended up becoming a nice player for them, was was an all-star player. And then obviously they moved him for Kevin Durant, but they could have moved him for something else. He did have value and all that work on the fringes with or without the Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving thing would have allowed Brooklyn to be in a pretty solid position moving forward, even without some of the luxuries that Houston is afforded with some of those top picks, with all these future picks. The Nets didn't even have any of their own picks during that era. And so if you take that mindset and you think about making sure you're getting as many things right as possible, getting Kevin Porter Jr. developed into the talented player that I'm pretty sure everybody knows he can be, making sure that Christian Wood focuses not only on putting up numbers, but on driving winning basketball, making sure you're building a healthy culture that revolves around continuing to to improve day in and day out. Those are going to be the things that more than anything else are going to help Houston complete this rebuild in a way that they're happy with. Now, ultimately, I hope that this coaching staff is the group that allows them to get there. Obviously, it's been an up and down start to to Steven Silas's coaching career. And it seems like, based off his post-game comments, what he and his coaching staff were attempting to do with this group in terms of making sure they were giving great effort, making sure they were competing, is partially what led to the issue that instigated me making this video in the first place. And so, on one hand, it's unfortunate that the players responded that way, but on the other, it is good to see that they are pushing them in that direction. But ultimately, again, this is where we're at. This is going to take a little bit. You're going to be frustrated. There's going to be times where you go two and eight in a month and you're going to be looking around wondering what in the world is going on? Why can't we win basketball games? We should be better than this. But the focus should be, hey, Shangun's averaging 15 and 12 this month, hypothetically. That's really, really good. He's made some strides defensively. I like that. Let's make sure that in three years, this is like a 17 and 11 guy who's protecting the rim, who's a pretty good passer. Whether that be for our team or another team, that's an intriguing asset. Hey, Jalen Green's assists are really up. The turnovers are down. He's taking more efficient shots. All that athleticism and the other things that he brings to the table are always going to be there, but he's continued to improve as a perimeter player. Kevin Porter Jr. is doing more things than just scoring and and, and you know and playmaking. He's defending a little bit. He He's making some of those in-between plays. He's improving as an off-ball spot-up guy. Christian Wood improving as a defender as well. All of those things are going to help lead you to a situation in which you can be a just a better built NBA basketball team, again, whether it be for your team or a different team. So ultimately, that's where they're at in Houston, and I would just advocate for patience. It's unfortunate that this uh, situation went down the way that it did. I don't know what the punishment is going to be for, for either of those guys, but ultimately, they're talented. And, and, and if you're Houston, you bet on talent at this point, and you do your best to continue to develop these guys as players and as people and help them continue to improve and how they deal with frustrating situations like that. Again, not having actually been there, I'm not going to sit here and judge guys too much for their reactions to, again, what is a frustrating situation. But ultimately, I'm rooting for Houston, quite simply, just because I want as many good basketball teams uh, as we can get. And hopefully they continue to make the proper moves on the uh, on the fringes so that guys like Jalen Green and whoever they pick moving forward 
um, have a really, really good environment in which to continue to grow as players and hopefully be a good team over the next couple of seasons. But that is going to be the end of today's video. I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, be sure to check out the boxes on screen, as I said. With all those things said, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your Sunday and a great rest of your weekend, and I will see you all next time.